welcome back to my channel. I have a fun face-to-face -face video for you today. I've been asked by subscribers and a few friends on what to buy first if they're starting off in scrapbooking. And instead of writing a lengthy email back to them explaining what I would recommend, I thought it'd be fun to kind of sit down and share with you with things that I've pulled on where to start off with basic supplies and tools that you need. Okay, so the first question you have to ask yourself though, if you want to do classic scrapbooking or what they call um, pocket pages. Pocket pages is also known as Project Life. Now the difference is because obviously classic scrapbooking, you just need your pattern paper and you're gonna be sticking your pictures right on there. Pocket style is where we have the, um, the cards, the decorative cards of pattern paper or cutting down pattern paper to fit in sleeves that have a certain format with like 3x4 cards or 4x6 cards and then you go from there. So that's the first question you want to ask yourself. Then you're going to want to know what size you want to work in because there are plenty of sizes available. So first would be like a 6x6 six six size. This is just a classic scrapbooking, ooh, scrapbooking um, one that I did, this is from, this is already like six years old, where it's just pattern paper on and your photos. I used to cut just my photos up into different shapes, there is a heart, and just mount it on pattern paper. This was very basic, okay, and this is six by six. I didn't go crazy with stickers, as you can see, or embellishments, and all of my titles were done on the computer. So you don't even have to buy, you know, a lot of different, you know, alphas, um, to make your titles, you can just do pattern paper and go to town. So this is a 6x6 six um, classic scrapbooking style, okay? And it's post bound. There's also post bound um, for an 8x8. Eight eight. This one's blank, actually. I usually do mini albums. What are, these are the size I would call mini for um, like one event or special occasion. So like a birthday or a weekend away or you know, baby shower or wedding um, is when I usually break out into the smaller size. Okay, again, post bound, that one was eight by eight. And they also have post bound 12 by 12. Now, all of these are found at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Joann's. You can also buy them online. Um, the good thing with the post bound, though, is that they always come with your first 10 pages of the page protectors inside. Then you can adjust and add more filler pages and get them nice and chunky like this one is. Um, but it's nice to have the page protectors already shredded off in there. Um, that is what you will find with post bound. I will show you also, so this one, let me just get this, this is just your 12 by 12. So this is your pattern paper again on your, and your pictures, and that's it. Okay, so this is 12 by 12 size. So again, ask yourself if you want to do classic scrapbooking or pocket style pages, then you got to choose your size. Now they also come in uh, ring binders as well. So let me pick those up from the floor, they're right down here. Okay. Ugh. Mine are heavy, sorry, sorry. Okay, so with ring binders, you have, um, there are four by four, I don't have that to show you, I haven't worked with that. But what you also have is a six by eight size. Six by eight with the ring binder. With this binder, this one's a December daily, I did a few bits of everything. I did pocket style, so here's some pocket, you know, with the layout, and then I also did layout 6x8. This might be a safe start for most people. You can see that pocket pages are like 4x6, you know, two of them, or you have the two 3x4s, and then, oh no, this one's all four 3x4s. So it's a safe way to start off because all you need is some pattern paper and print out your pictures and you can instantly add them into your album. Um, there doesn't need to be any matting or anything and they also have full page 6x8. So it might be a nice safe start for you to do um, a 6x8 style, but do keep in mind, I can still do, this is like classic um, scrapbooking on this side. So pocket style here, classic scrapbooking here in a 6x8 album, okay? You just have to buy the different protector sleeves. They also have um, the binders. So again, the D-ring binder. And this one is ugh, let's put it around. Um, pocket style as well. So it'll desert, it'll tell you, you know, which um, ones you have to already buy. And then you just buy the Project Life cards or cut down paper. Okay? But in the D-ring binder, you still, here's the D-ring, you can still do your 12 by 12 layouts. Okay, pattern paper, 12 by 12 layouts. Not a problem in this size either. For someone like me, I do have both going on simultaneously. It's just because this is completely what I do for my memory keeping. I do 
usually a 12 by 12 layout for like the best photo and then for the rest of the events from the photos I use the pocket pages um, to kind of showcase the rest of the photos I don't use okay so that's question number one then you need photos I will not stress that you need a home printer at all I've only brought a home printer for my um, photos um, this year and it was a great investment I spent $100 on a Canon Pixia something I will leave the description down below in the one I use but for the longest time for years I just use CVS Walgreens Target and sent them via an app they have them easily to upload off of your phone and that's how I did all of my photo printing okay so do not feel pressured to buy a printer that would do all your photo printing you simply just do not need it okay then you want to talk about paper. Now, in order to get, I got it all set up for you. Um, in order to get your feet wet into the situation, into scrapbooking, I would definitely recommend what we call a subscription kit. Now, there are plenty of websites out there that do offer a kit. What the kit you'll have to choose is either scrapbooking or project life cards as well. And tons of companies are out there that, that offer them. I will leave as many of them that I remember in the description bar down below. I myself have done them for over a year. I do the classic scrapbooking for my kit. Um, I'm going to show you the current click kit available, but I have done Hip Kit Club. I have done the Studio Calico Project Life Club. Gossamer Blue has one, Scraptastic, Felicity Jane, Citrus Twist, Coco Daisy. These are all websites that offer a, script, a subscription kit. I think it's a great way, knowing that I've been doing them for a year, if I knew it then, I would have started here. The kits offer you a variety of product and truly all your layouts will be cohesive that you use with it. And you get a range of wood, you know, wood veneer, um, stickers, alphas, um, all your ephemera comes with them and you don't have to buy all your, you know, these supplies all on your own and spend tons of money. So I will show you this month, they come in like these little plastic really zip block bags. Most kits will come with anywhere between like six to 12 pattern papers. Sometimes the kit will feature more than one company and they all go because they'll all have either a same color, maybe a same theme, maybe they're all floral and they're just simply gorgeous. They usually do a fantastic job of putting a kit together. And sometimes the kit will just feature one brand's um, collection. For instance, this is one brand's collection and here is the paper array and they're beautiful, I love the stripe. So paper array, you'll have the A side and then usually in the back the B side will be a different pattern paper. This one, just by chance, actually they're all solid in the back. So you'll always have to decide which side you want to use. What's good about a kit is that you can either A, get the 10, you know, use all these as the background papers and then you're good, so that's already, you know, all your supply well utilized. Or you can also start off with buying, and this is just another tip, you always need classic white cardstock. This will let your kit go even further because you can only, you know, cut up this paper and do a variety of things as far as your layouts are concerned. So again, it comes with your papers. And then for instance, this kit comes with corresponding stickers that you can use on your layouts. It has the die cuts, so that means all of like the fun little shapes and embellishments for your layout. It already comes in the kit. It also features some wood veneers in different shapes. They always include like a set of alphas so you can write your titles. And then for instance, all the kits are a little bit different. Some will offer a stamp set. Some may offer um, like watercolor pencils or a tube of paint, um, like something like an art supply. Um, they're all a little different and I can't tell you like one's better than the other because I've tried them all and they're all really good in their own way. So for instance, this one still goes into having a little like sequence pack by Pink Fresh. This click kit still comes with um, their own set of Project Life cards. So this one actually comes with half and half. We have some yellow thread. This one comes with four flare buttons to use, which is um, unique to the kit. And you get all of this in the kit. The kits usually run about $30 and they're shipped right to your house and that does not include shipping so depending on where you're at shipping will be the additional cost but they're a great way to get started. Now if you don't want to spend $30 on a mail to you kit, craft stores do offer kits as well. They're usually the ones found in cellophane at Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Bobby. 
Hobby Lobby. Um, this one, for instance, comes with nine sheets of pattern paper and three sheets of stickers and alphas. So again, this one can be at the store. It's $15, but it's everything in one little cellophane bag, and you can get a multitude of layouts started, and you don't have to spend a lot of money on all different kind of embellishments for your layouts. I think kits are a great idea. Um, me and my big ideas usually offers them. Cartabella usually offers kits, um, and they're featured at the stores, and they can range anywhere between ten, fifteen, twenty dollars. Um, I would always say too, they're usually in the theme, maybe the same color family, but again, a good choice to get started. Okay, so think of the kits. I touch on it a little bit. You definitely need some white classic cardstock. This one's from Hobby Lobby. I know that Michaels also offers them. Joann's does as well, but cardstock is a must. I go through this in bulk. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. Because even so, if you don't want to buy pattern paper, if you have white cardstock and you have markers or crayons or watercolors or paints, and you can do your decorative background and put your pictures on here, and that is all that you need to do. Have your album and put them in and get started. Okay, it's simple as that. What you can invest in though, if you want to add a little bit more money to your supplies, maybe start off with some six by six pattern papers. They will always come with a plethora, plethora? Good, a good array of pattern paper to get you started. Buy one or two of these and you can get started with that too. Easy peasy. They range anywhere between three and maybe six dollars. One for instance is three dollars from Tuesday morning. So get a six by six pack. They also have the 12 by 12 available. These are collections. So this one for instance is all Dear Lizzie. Okay, and you get all these papers with it. This one has 48 sheets. You'll never finish 48 sheets. I mean, I anytime I have anything left over, they go in my little random collection right here. It's a lot of paper, okay? So if you get one pad, you know, one 12 by 12, a pack of white cardstock, and maybe a six by six in another color of collection, you can get started right here very easily, okay? Even more of a bargain too, you've seen these at the big, you know, um, craft stores as well. This one has 180 sheets. I have bought this thing like over two years ago, three years ago, and look how much I still have. Now don't get me wrong, this is not the greatest weight paper, it's like copy paper, but truly it's just too much paper and I got sick of the pattern like rather quickly. Um, so I wouldn't say to start off with this. I mean it's a good buy, but once you get into it and you really like it, you'll realize that this was just way too much paper and the same patterns that you're never going to utilize at all. But it is out there and available. I just want to show you all your options when you can get a bulk of paper just to get you started into scrapbooking. Okay, so that's all the paper um, that you can get or purchase um, to get you started. So don't mind my messy little background right here. <laughs> okay, then let's start off with some of the tools. Absolutely what you need first, as I make a little bit of a racket, a paper trimmer. This one is by Fiskars. It's 12 by 4, but it does have the swing out arm so you can still cut your 12 by 12 paper. I use this every day and I've only bought it once, okay? The only thing I do is replace the blade when it's not cutting as sharp. And this one has what they call a wire guide. So when you put your paper under the, the door, the little um, ruler, there's a wire there that'll show where the cut is, so it'll get you very precise cuts. Do know that you can cut up paper and make up your own die cuts as well. So you can cut little 2x2 two two squares, 3x3 three three squares, and use them um, as your layering pieces on your layouts. But this is a must. Paper trimmer, a must. A must as well is scissors. Now scissors, I started off with dollar store ones. Do not get me wrong, I'm not trying to have you go out and break the bank to get started in scrapbooking. Buy a pair of dollar store scissors, anything with a long enough blade. These um, are Fiskars, these are just an investment. These were like $8, $10. They're sharp, they don't have goop that builds up on these blades for whatever kind of coating they are, they're really great. So I need a pair of scissors. And then maybe invest in a little tiny pair as well. These are by Cutter Bee. This is what we call like our fussy cutters. So if you want to do like detail cutting out um, of anything, you'll need something with a sharper little nose tip to um, do that sort of cutting. Okay, so those are scissors, a must. Again, I use these every day, every single layout. You need them. Um, adhesive. So next, you need to get some tape runners. Okay, these are disposable. These are inexpensive, these you throw out, okay? Um, Acid-free tape runners, this will tape down all your photos and, all, and glue paper to paper. 
What you want to do though is also get maybe instead of the disposal ones, but you know, these cost a couple dollars. The Tombow Mono Tape Runner. This one's refillable. So they look gosh darn the same. But this Sorry about that, my battery ran out. Um, so I was talking about tape runners. So these are disposable. This one you buy inserts and you refill this and this one you can use over and over again. So this is where to start and this is where you can comfortably stay. If you do want to make an investment though, the good old fashioned ATG gun. Um, this one I did use a coupon for. Do not pay full price for anything in this pro in this hobby of ours. This one, um, and why people love it so much, A, it has like 300 feet or something like that of tape. You put inserts in here, and it is a little bit bulky to use in the beginning, but you do get used to it, okay? I always buy acid-free tape because it won't eat or corrode your photos when you're using it. So you need some sort of tape runner adhesive. And then you also need, though, a liquid glue. Elmer's glue is just fine. Um, I started off with that, but these days I always have like a tacky glue on hand or the scotch quick dry glue on hand because you need liquid glue to put down wood veneer or sequences because it won't work with the tape runner. Um, things like ribbon or fabric, you will need a liquid type glue in order to do those sorts of layouts with those sorts of embellishments. All my journal writing on pictures or on my cards are always done with Sharpies. I have the Sharpie Ultra Fine Marker and the Sharpie Pen. I have plenty of pens. You can use anything, but these do write on photos, but I go through these the most. It's the darkest, crisp, black writing for them that you'll need. And I go, th I bought another pack of both of these today. So another four pack and four pack because I do go through them that quickly. Okay? And then the last things I would say maybe a couple of punches. Now I have had these forever. These are all circles. I thought I needed circles because I didn't want to cut out circles and have rough edges. So I have a two and a half inch one, a two inch, and then the one and a half inch punch. I use these all the time. Whenever you're starting off and you want to cut down some of the 12 by 12 pattern paper, cut a bunch of circles out and you have instant embellishments and for, you know, or additionals to your backgrounds. So it's a good spot. You can get them in all shapes and sizes. I have banners, I have hearts, I have stars, I have crowns. You know, there's all sorts of them and they're quick and easy. Now, when you get further along, by all means, we can get a die cutting machine, but for a quick punch all the time or to cut a picture out, I always grab my punches. These are definitely a must. And I think that does it. Don't get me wrong, I started off with probably like you know those scissors that have the decorative edges I had those for the longest time they were great for adding borders um, but I just don't use them anymore so I really wouldn't invest I wouldn't I don't want to say like get those unless you really want to because they're just things that I don't use anymore as you kind of um, get further further along into this hobby um, so I think that wraps it up. What I will do though also is make an additional video about your basic supplies for doing some mixed media. There are like a staple items that I always use and I feel like that would be an informational video that you would like as well. Um, if, I, if you have any other questions, by all means, please leave them down below. I'll remember to put in most of the information, all the items I use in the description bar as well as a subscription club that I did make reference to. Um, but those are really a good start for you. So remember, you gotta choose, choose scrapbooking or project life um, pocket pages, then your album size, get some paper, white card stock, your paper trimmer, some scissors, adhesive, and a punch or two, and you can get started in scrapbooking. It is that easy, and it's really fun. I mean, I never thought I would fall in love with it as much as I have, but you're, it just happens, it really does. And it's a great community here on YouTube, so by all means, um, you know, try it out. Really try it out. It's really fun. You'll really love it. And I think that's it. If you do, like I said, if you have any questions, by all means, leave them down below. Um, please subscribe if you haven't done so, and please follow me on my social media. Uh, I do a lot of posting there with my projects, so in case you ever want to see them like close up, I do post on Instagram and Facebook as well. And I think that's it. I can't. Hmm, yeah, that'll be, <laughs> I'm just making sure I didn't forget anything. All right, everyone, till my next video, have a good day. Bye.